several other units around the state. They're advertising on the side of their car. They don't live there. They never live there. They have no intention of living there. I can bring that to your attention. I can do that if you'd like uh, at the next meeting. Uh, I don't have that information with me, but I can bring it as a formal request to um, to enforce enforce the zoning ordinances um, put it on the agenda if you like. It's up, it's up to you. I can do it either way. I'm going to let the attorney take a look at these. Yeah. I think we got to pick at it. Um, you had to eat the elephant one piece at a time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you. Yeah. Um, doing this to help help you along the way. I, I certainly very much appreciate it and uh, it's been a long road getting here oh, yeah. so as you know so we'll do what we can and um, hopefully we're going to get somewhere. Whatever I can do to help. Um, I have 25 years experience in um, codes and standards. I'm also the director of fire protection for the uh, largest paint company in the world. So I'm in New York City, I'm down in Chicago, I'm all over the place. I deal with zoning all the time. I'm quite a bit involved when I um, moved up from Nashville five years ago with the local zoning and, and issues such as we're, we're facing now in Madison. We'll be glad to help. Perfect. I really appreciate that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any more public comment? Just briefly, I wanted to introduce myself. I'm Roy Tilsley. I had written to you about the Churchill Road uh, issue that's on the agenda last week. Attorney with Bernstein Shore for Sharon Schilling and other interests of the brothers. I just wanted you to know that I'm here. Sure. If you have questions or concerns, we're ready to address it. Okay. okay. Thanks. Any more public comments? Okay, seeing none, we're going to do the Escape and Explorer bid openings. Okay, this is the best part. Could you buy the Explorer? Yeah. You're going to want to escape. Two feet. <laughs> Two for each. Oh. Well, I'll let you go. I'll let you guys go. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's I'll take all the fun. Come on now. Oh, yeah. It's like Christmas. Two bids for the Ford Escape, the 2007 Ford Escape, and the higher bid is uh, four thousand dollars. We got one here for the Explorer for eleven hundred. Oh, they've got you've got both Explorers. This yeah. One. And the other one is twelve hundred for from Paul Bonner. Those are both for Explorer? Thank you. Yes. Yeah, these are both for Explorer. These are both for the Escape. And so what did you have, John? I had an Explorer for no, um, Paul Bonner for $1,200. That's the highest one. Nice one. I make a motion that we award the Explorer to the $1,200 bid. And the $4,000 bid was Roger Howard. Uh, I'd uh, make a motion that we uh, award the Ford Escape to Roger Howard for four thousand dollars. Second that both motions. All in favor? Aye. 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 Fifty-two hundred dollars. Yes. They said Merry Christmas. Okay, now Churchill Road classification. Mr. Tafuro, I saw you just walked in, so here we go. Um, well, I'm gonna let the the I guess the two of the, oh, you, you want to go first. Oh, no, I guess my question is: Did you say that you submitted something? 
I did. I sent a letter in last week. We never received it. I had a copy of it. it. Was it. Did it? Yeah. yeah. I apologize. On Thursday. Thursday. Yeah, it went on Thursday. I didn't see it or print it out for for you guys. I didn't know. I haven't seen so they it. haven't seen it. Oh. No, I I don't. Sorry, yeah, I don't recall. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I it's apologize. Great, huh? it was a I, great I, I, letter. Um, I have a copy. I can have my copy. I don't know if the book will have it. Certainly. To digest it tonight, but I apologize if it didn't make it. I. Oh, that is a great letter. Mm -hmm. that cover letter. I'm not going to be able to digest it. Yeah, between this and this. So, are we going to be? We're not going to be deciding anything tonight, anyway. Or we have. Well, to. no, I thought that's. Yeah, I thought that was what. Yeah, but I didn't have this. True. I kind of would like to sit down and read both of them. Me too. I did have attachments to that if I could. Sure. That's part of the letter. I'm sorry. Do I don't you, remember seeing it. Do you need these back? No, I am in the office. Okay, I just can't. If I had more coffees, I'd share them with you. And I fairly certainly didn't submit it, but I, no, I, don't, very well I, don't, I don't push the button. So I, I think we're going to blame whoever you pushes the buttons. Whatever. <laughs> Here's another copy also. If you guys want to read it, I had written some things up myself because I had read it and, and had a chance to, and to digest it, so I have some things to add as well. Um, but if we need to all come back to a different meeting, that's fine. Well, could I, could I ask you one thing? I yeah. spent some time reading the letters from Bergeron and uh, Emanusa uh, as best I could read uh, something from the 1800s, it looks like. Um, have you looked at our Class 6 Rose study? I have not seen the whole packet of it. I, I, would, I would like it if you did look at it. That was done back in 1999. They spent two years working on that project. And there is a fair amount of information on Churchill Road in that study. And in the um, town meeting of 2000, just before I got sworn in, um, town meeting accepted that study and nearly bound the selectmen to defend it. Yes, I agree. So, before we, well, before I would vote to to take that road away from the town, I would need some really good argument that our study was faulty. If you can do that, I think it would be fair. I'm trying to be, it's just, I don't have a dog in the fight here. Right. Yeah, I agree. Uh, yeah. But I am here defending what town meeting said you will defend. And that's what we're trying to do as fairly as possible. Have we lost some in the cases? Yes, we have. But we've got a whole book full of class six roads. I'm not arguing that there's class six roads, there's plenty of them. Yeah. I just don't see that this one was ever a class six road. Right. And then in 1999, when they did the study, or 98, 99, yeah. it became a class six road by their study. And I have problems with how the study was conducted. At the time, I knew people who had been volunteering to be on the committee and were driven off of it because um, they didn't line up with uh, Mr. King's agenda. And several other issues have been brought out, uh, one of them in a case that I was involved in, and there, there's other issues that I find with the study and with Mr. King's whole method, and the fact that when he was done with it, he refused to take any responsibility for its correctness or, or anything else. Well, if you could... I would love to get a copy of it so that I could actually sure. read everything about it, right. see what was done. You're I'm not saying they didn't have anything right, because there's plenty of roads. I have the record of all the roads in Eaton and Madison that were ever sent to the state as Class 6 roads and laid out. And there's plenty of other roads that existed already yeah. that were used by the public. So we would welcome you to come to the office and go through that and make right. your notations. Thank you. Uh, when, when can I? I, I need something to hang my hat on. I, I, other than your hat book. 
Yeah, I'll <laughs> buy a hat rack if it'll help. Huh? I'll buy you a hat rack if it'll help. So I, I'd like to do that. When is it available to, to look at? Oh, anytime we're open. Anytime? Okay, thank you. It's on my desk. Thank you. Yeah, I gotta digest this. Take a look. Come on, MP. Just like to reaffirm for the record, there's absolutely no relation. <laughs> <laughs> different ball cake. <can't> yeah. <laughs> Much different. I apologize for missing oh. that now. Right. Okay. So the, we set it Thursday at like 11 ish for my assistant, Patty McNamara. If you didn't get it, can you let me know? Maybe it's in spam or something. But yeah, uh, um, we can get it straightened out tomorrow so that we get stuck in the I future. will. Well, I guess we'll push that off for next week. Next week. Yeah. I don't know if I would have had a chance to read it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, sorry. That's fine. Guys, stuff happens. Come in, but mm -hmm. no, it's fault. Okay. Uh, so while you're here, do you guys want to say, do you have anything to add, Mr. Tafudo, or? I, I like. I think it made more sense for you guys, folks to digest Just the letter and take it out. That way, if you have questions, we can address them. I mean, I can. And do you want to? We'll put this on the agenda right now for June fourteenth. I think. Yeah. Well, we'll have it settled by then, one way or another. Agreed. Not available. I'm You're not available the fourteenth. Yeah, I'm sorry. I get a commitment. Oh. Well, then, any chance of doing it the 28th? That would be great because it's bike week on the 14th. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <geez. laughs> <laughs> bike week is on the 14th. That's a national that's, holiday. That's, yeah. He's a writer over here. Uh, okay, the tw that's fine with me if that's what you appreciate. Yeah, thank you. Um, you can make a point. Yeah. Um, Hillary, your hearing was supposed for, for yeah. ZBA, is supposed to be June 5th, 16th yeah. now. It's actually the 16th. We which kind of depends on this. Yeah. Or or the ZBA gets continued again. They've just been, yes. <laughs> they've been they keep getting continued. Well, you know, I, anyway, I, I, I'm not saying I'm just yeah. saying it out loud. That's all. I'm not. I, I, again, I apologize. I, know. I, I can't you, make a decision. No. Tonight. Yeah. Do you need to? Yeah, your surveyor was coming. You said. That was. Oh, he's yeah, already here. Sorry. Yeah. I wanted to be able to call him to say. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> you mean I could have just stayed it almost there? <laughs> oh <my God>. oh! <laughs> That's great. No, Okay. Thank you, folks. So well, thank you. See you in a few weeks. <clears throat> sure. Uh, okay, JP Goodwin. Hi. Danforth Lane subdivision. Yes. Um, I have a couple of questions about um, the proposal for um, a cluster zoning on the lot above me, which already has serious drainage issues. And um, I noticed in the study that the, um, the person who is driving this um, permit process or this request for permits intends to put in a road that conforms to the state standards and I read the state standards and none of Danforth Lane conforms. It's a, it's an, a rural lane, it's not a state road and um, I think um, there's a huge concern not just for me but from a whole bunch of other people that Lot 5 on Danforth Lane 363, um, which was bought at auction as a single family lot and is now being proposed as a cluster zoning site, um, lacks sufficient frontage on any road, although it does have frontage on a class six road, but not sufficient, not 200 feet for one house. Um, the proposal for an acceptable road to New Hampshire DOT standards contradicts the lane which we live on, which has been maintained by the town for, well, it's been paved for about 13 years maybe, 12 years. Uh, before that it was just dirt. And it's in some places it's only 18 feet wide, which doesn't, um, and it does not have consistent ditches on either side. There's a huge drainage issue where we live. Um, 
taking our rural residential neighborhood by an out-of-town developer who intends to put up at least three houses on this lot with less than two acres of land per house um, and no frontage. Um, it's total non-compliance and all the people in the neighborhood are really up in arms. Some people are actually surrounded by swamp now. Um, Danforth Lane with the proposed um, plan. I was wondering if the town is willing to actually accept a road there and, ta and take responsibility for the maintenance and take responsibility for the drainage. As it is now, I have a waterfall in my basement when there's a quarter of an inch of rain just from them filling the driveway above me. And um, that has nothing to do with paving and putting in three houses and digging foundations and blasting ledge or anything like that. I was wondering if the town, what the town's position was on taking care of this if in fact the proposal were accepted. Well, so ultimately it's your decision. Well, it's, town meetings. it's actually, it, it comes ultimately down to town meetings decision. So the way I think it works, and hopefully Linda will correct me if I'm wrong, and John, but so before they do anything, because that is a class six road, that portion that they want to, um, they they came to a planning board meeting a month or so ago or two months ago now, I can't remember, but uh, for a proposal. And so, but the first thing they have to do, and I know by statute, to do any work on a class six road, you're supposed to come to us, to the board of selectmen, to ask to do any work on any class six road. I can't think of any time that we've denied that so they could come do that and they but then they said they wanted to make it up to uh bring it up to class five standards and have the town take it over and you know plow it and maintain it and all that sort of thing but um first of all once they brought it up to class if they brought it up to class five standards got permission to do work on the road then they would have to bring it to town meeting to have the town accept it as a class five road and then we would own it in perpetuity and have to maintain it in perpetuity but how does that work if it doesn't connect to another class five road um winter road i is is winter road a class five road yeah it is yeah and danforth lane is even yeah. though they don't actually conform to the right state yeah of the class so five road. yeah okay. there's a lot of um roads that we have a lot of secondary roads or class five roads that don't meet the class the today's class five road standard okay. all over town mm -hmm. um, but they would have to in other words they would have to put a 50 foot right of way with verges and all that kind yeah of stuff so it. you'd have the existing class five road that's there as it stands right today right. and then you'd have this big beautiful no, no, it's not beautiful. No, no, but if they made it, it's, well, right. <laughs> right you know, outside my window. You know, so, you know, certainly, I know when we did that auction, and, and um, that certainly was not, I was on the board then, I think John was too. I mean, that was the, that's the wing, your wing yes, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is. Well, that was I, actually the Warner property, really. Yeah. Well, was the well property. that was a convoluted thing. Yes, yeah. it was. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like it still is. Yeah. yeah it's pretty convoluted now. Um, you know, they, the planning board yet? Yeah, he came for a preliminary, like I said, it was probably two months ago now, I think. And it's scheduled again for tomorrow night, but yeah. he didn't notify all the abutters. <laughs> so it's probably going to be postponed. Yeah, I did get the, um, the applicant's agent um, uh, requested a, in writing a proposed postponement from tomorrow night to, ju to the July meeting because they did fail to give us a label set for one of the abutters, so there was someone who didn't get notified, and there was some information on the plan that um, that Mark Olson thought would be important, like the classifications of the road and what portions are on the plan. So, and they so. have spoken to our uh, fire chief and DPW director of their intentions. I'm pretty sure you guys had a Zoom meeting with them or something uh, a while back. Um, and I, I think we pretty much know their intentions. They're just trying to find a way, if they can find a way around it. Around it. <laughs> but I haven't seen it yet. And, but first of all, the, like I said, they're not supposed to do anything until they come and talk to us. And I haven't seen them or heard them. Okay. You know, it, that's supposed to be actually when you do, you know, I read the statute recently, when you, before you even. 
if you're doing major changes, Class Six Road, it's actually supposed to be um, uh, you're supposed to bring a plan to the selectmen, and it's supposed to be registered at the registry. Okay. And the so they haven't even come to us at the all yet. Is so. But they have a history of not going to you. Yes, first, they you? started building. They started yeah. building on the old wing house without a building permit. Yeah. I turned them in. Cool. Inadvertently, <laughs> I came to Linda to ask her a question, and she said, well, I haven't done anything. And I said, well, I've already poured a foundation. Um, so this is, this is the, the, you know, they pay the fine later. Yeah. Yeah, um, certainly that's not our intention. I'm glad you, you, you're you keeping an eye out there for us. I don't get out there very much. I and, was uh, trying to be a really good neighbor. Now okay. I'm not anymore. No. And, you know, sometimes, uh, yeah. I mean, that's how building uh, enforcement and codes, that's how most of the people get caught is, um, you know, nice illegal thing. STR operators, that's how they get caught is their neighbors, you know, right. turning them in. Yeah. And, and when the house was empty, I know that some people on the police force said, you know, keep an eye on it if people start congregating up there. Please call us and let yeah. us know. So we've kind of always kept an eye on it. And I think when exactly. we bought it, I'm almost positive, I was there at the auction, the, the gentleman asked, he goes, I, I think I can subdivide it. You know, he said it after he bought it. And, um, something to that effect and I think we're like, I don't think you can, you know. No, and the auctioneer said this is a single family lot. Yeah. And I know other people who were there at the auction who actually were there with checks. I was one of the people there with checks who heard the auctioneer say that. And then when the gentleman bought it, I walked up and shook his hand. I said, I'm your next door neighbor. And he said, oh yeah, I bought it for a friend. Mm -hmm. And then he came up with a contractor six months later and said, no, I'm going to, you know, put a six-bedroom house here and I'm going to sell it to somebody with 12 kids. And, and then the surveyor was there last fall and he was putting all these flags up that went from the driveway straight back into the woods. And I said, gee, you look like you're surveying for subdivision. He said, no. And that's just what's happening. That's exactly what they were doing. So... Um, are you planning on attending the maybe the planning board meeting tomorrow night? I'm going to. Oh, I wouldn't. I, you said it's put off till July. I, I'm going to so. stop in in case uh -huh. they yeah. show up until it's officially postponed. It's really not. Postponed. Yeah, it's yeah. really not postponed. But yeah. um, there are a number of people who were planning on coming from out of state who own property, abutting property, and I'm going to call them off because I don't think anything's going to happen. Um, when is the Meeting in, in July. It's the, must be the sixth. It's the first two, first Wednesday. Sixth. Yep. The Thank sixth you. and seventh. Okay. I just wanted to be on the record as saying that um, this is just it's going to destroy the neighborhood. Well, uh, we're going to do everything. I, I will do everything we can to make sure that they at least follow the. Our rules, zoning rules, try yeah. to. There'll have to be a tremendous amount of blasting too to put in the turn around. Mike? And my house is on that ledge, as is one of the other abutters' houses, and that's going to change the drainage too, and nobody knows how. Nobody can guess. Is there any record? I'm Tom, um, her husband. Is there any record that um, of these conversations that it wasn't going to be zoned, that it was. That it what, what? wasn't going to be zoned for multiple family right. dwellings. Everybody remembers the conversation. Yeah. It was a single family. And they weren't in meetings or anything like that, so, you know. I, you okay. Know. It is a seven acre lot, but there's a lot of wetlands on it. Consequently, they have to go for clusters only because they can't get two acre, three two acre lots off the property. Um, so that, you know, doesn't really conform. Well, they wouldn't have the front of Jenny, huh? They have no front. Yeah, they were trying to do something. I, you know, I wish I was more familiar with that. I have a plan. So, I want to look at. Yeah. Well, they were gonna like. They were gonna Coaster, use. This, this well, they were gonna use a cul-de-sac as part of their front edge, and isn't that my off base there, John? Uh, no, I think you're right, but I still don't think right. it's big enough. Um, but the other thing is that. Um, because even if they improved this, they would still have only 124 feet oh. on the road for three houses. Mike, did you want to say something? Well, I just had a, well, yeah, I guess a comment slash question. I 
I think I would recommend a phone call to the attorney if he's in tomorrow morning, because to me a pivotal question is what you already discussed with you guys are the only ones that can, can permit improvements to a class, any town road really, mm -hmm. but in this case a class six road. Does that in and of itself shut down the planning board process? Can the planning board take action on something that they don't have a quote yet have authority to do because they haven't been before this board? That's a good question. Ooh, very good question. Or do they just make recommendations to you, the planning board? Well, no, they would be approving. So, well, I guess can, before yeah. not to interrupt you, but I'm a little bit familiar with the process having set on the planning board. The first thing they're going to do is determine completeness of the application. And I would think part of that would be, do you have authority to do everything that you are proposing to do? The answer is no, because they haven't been here yet. But from a legal, legally is that part of the decision? Like To, to me it would be. If I was sitting on the planning board, or even the selectmen's rep to the planning board, I would bring that up when the application is presented and reviewed for completeness. My hand would be in the air saying, One is two acres within the other they're proposing changes to a town road, and they haven't come before the selectmen to get that permission. Yeah. That's one point seven. Thank you. But that only buys you a month. Yeah. But the other thing you said is that the town has to okay this, has to accept this, but they have to yeah, build so, it first? Well, that, that's the, the confusion. So they have to bring it up to, so if they bring it up, so say all this goes through and they build this beautiful road, this class five road up to standards and all that. So they can't, uh, once they do that, then it has to go to town meeting be accepted. That doesn't mean just because they bring a uh, road up to class 5 stand doesn't mean we're automatically going to start plowing it, maintaining it, mm -hmm. and paving it, and grab, you know, doing whatever. We're, it, it has to come to town meeting. If town meeting says no, then they have a class 5 road. And I just can't imagine the ta the it's happened before. I've, I've seen yeah, it happen, yeah. but to build a, the town would take on a uh, you know, an, even any part of a class 5 road to take care of you know, three. It's really a private driveway at that point. You know, you're you're it is taking a yeah. It's access to a private for for three houses and a cluster development. That doesn't make any sense. Be a really nice yeah. Driveway, you to me, you know. No, me either. But but you know people. But you know, you never know what happens at town meeting. You know. So. Oh, I know. But the process is in place for a reason, and it's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, they have to build it. The planning board specifies the requirements. They have to build it. And then it's their gambles. They're yeah. they, they are gambling. Yeah. I mean, look at Banfield Hollow. Yeah. Yeah. The best example we have right now. Those are all beautiful roads built to the specifications as required. But they, they haven't brought it to town meeting yet. Don't know if they ever will. Maybe they won't. But if they did, the town meeting could still say no. Right. Beautiful roads with cul-de-sacs and everything. Town meeting has the decision. Well, in this case, they'd be cutting a huge amount of old growth and destroying 200-year-old uh, stone walls. And I, and I always thought it's great to have the actual neighbors and the people in the neighborhood to come if they're opposed to it to come and speak. You know, oh, they will? They, yeah. So, you know, you guys coming in, it, it speaks volumes to, to me personally and, yeah, me and I'm sure the board, you know. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> You've done some great work. Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot of work. Thank you. I appreciate it. And I appreciate you being put on the record as mm -hmm. opposing this. So, uh, Do you want one of these, John? Do I need one? Oh, sorry, John. Oh, oh sorry, oh, John. Oh, <laughs> yes. Do I want? No. Oh, one. John, not Joe. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> If Linda gives me the number, I'll call him. Yeah. Oh, would you? Yeah. Because that'll be can, easier. Can we keep? Yeah. Good. I know what I said. Yeah. No, that's good. Linda's got a number.
but they're not coming from our bank. So, I hope, so, but I would love to get mm that. -hmm. Okay, budget reviews with department heads. Thank you guys for coming. Who would like to go first? I would. You look okay, that. Okay, you then Paul. Thank you, thank you. No, I gotta be. No, you gotta have the words. Go ahead. I got a scholarship award thing to go to. It. Yeah, no, definitely. You might have to leave. Well, I've never won any of those, so he can go ahead. <laughs> well, I'm not gonna win. <laughs> Straight C's, buddy. Straight oh, C's. you got that right. <laughs> Consistent. Consistency. Okay, so you want to start with the fire department, or yeah. sure. Oh. I'll, I'll put my head on the chopping block first. You ask me any questions you want to. <laughs> so, I just wanted to um, get with all the departments. We're all here together and, and to see where we're at in the budget. So John's. I he's, did those sheets there. Yeah. The next mm -hmm. ones that have details. Mm -hmm. So John, do you, for, do, uh, Aruda, do you have the? Um, you always figure out where we're at in the year. Yeah. And, well, we're at forty-two percent of the year, and we've we burnt up forty point one percent of our budget. So. Perfect. We're doing pretty good. We're doing pretty good. We've got a few. We sort of catch up in the summertime because we're not burning up a lot of fuel and that kind of thing. Um, I did have a question on fuel, but it's not for the fire department, so we're going to concentrate on the fire department. I just have a question that is not connected to your budget. With all these electric cars coming out, do you guys need any other equipment to open up cars that have gigantic batteries in them? Um, Maybe we should be planning for it if we need it. No, I don't. Uh, I, sh I can only say the ones that I've seen thus far, there's no, no special tools at all. The difficulty is they're all different. There's a master disconnect for those electric systems, but in somebody's infinite wisdom, they never standardized the place to put it. Some of them are up behind the back seat, some of them are on the, you know, they're in different places, but the answer to your question is there's no specialty okay. tools. It's a simple. It just came to me. Literally now. like a plug that you pull apart. Sometimes it's a. It's got like a. It's like almost like a fuse. It's like a spade fuse where if you pull that out, you break the connection. So there's no. I, and there's no issue if you got any firefighters, volunteers, who are dealing with battery operated guys. No, we have to get. We do the best that we can to get get training, and whenever there's a, a Prius available that we can tear apart, so the guys can see where the because it is DC power in all cases, mm -hmm. and so. But even some of our getting hybrid with hydrogen. It's, the technology is ever evolving. Yeah. Okay, that was one of my only question. Your budget looks fine. Yeah, because so you, don't, you don't burn your budget until the end of the year, right? No. Mm -hmm. You got a hundred and sixty four, almost hundred sixty five thousand dollar budget. Yeah, and I well, don't. actually a hundred. Not uh, if you take the warden now, it's one hundred fifty four eight, and you've only expended twenty seven thousand dollars, so you're well under the curve. I think. Uh, I'm not nervous about anything other than, of course, thankfully, I don't have to budget for fuel. You guys do that. And speaking of fuel, we're buying our police fuel over at Trippy. Yes. At two ninety a gallon. That could very well be what it is now. Yes, the contract for the state ended in. I believe it was March, the beginning of the end of February or the beginning of March, yes. Might be something we want to look into. I to look. That's okay. We might want to look into sending more of our vehicles there if necessary. I don't know what the rack prices are here. Well, that's what she's going to check. Yeah, they were they were competitive. They um, it was almost a dollar cheaper a gallon before that contract ran out, but now it's because of the gas market. They're following market influence, so. Yeah. There may not be much of a difference now, but yeah. there's something to look at. Mm -hmm. And I did check with them. It would not be anything to for everybody to start using the state. We just have to get new fobs because at least the highway department has an account with the state. And I just think it, 
was not used for undisclosed yeah, reasons, but, but I've got a theory. Like that. Do they have um, diesel down there? They yeah. do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Well, if, if my memory serves, the reason highway stopped is because, frankly, you burned a fair amount of fuel going all the way over there yeah. and coming back. Well, you couldn't do it for you know some of the equipment, but maybe some of the trucks or something wouldn't be. I don't know. You know, it depends on how much the price difference. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it depends. I know we paid over, still paid what five fifty a gallon or something like that for diesel off road. Oh, is that off road diesel too? They don't have off road diesel over there. No, but they don't, don't have don't. the taxes on it either. Mm. So, yeah, we'll look at that. Yeah, our fuel line, even though. Fuel has gone nothing. We put an extra twenty thousand, and I think at town meeting. Yes. Uh, so our budget is seventy six six. So we spend thirty five five. So we burnt forty six percent of our budget, which is not too far out of whack. Highway department will be drawing less, I would assume. You know, because too much plowing in July. Well, we're pretty busy though, so it yeah. should stay somewhat steady. I mean, we're still hauling rubbish and stuff, so. Yeah. You know, we don't really have that data because we were, we know what we were, what we started all of, we don't have a full year. We're just coming on to a full year with the rubbish truck is what I was going to say. But on my, as far as my budget goes, looking forward, I've got to complete the execution. There is a, there was a grant to reprogram radios, which is in process all the paperwork submitted but it needs to be concluded before july before july the end yeah. of july i think and i'm not sure i've got a new equipment line and i've got a radio repair line on we have it's one of those deals where we have to pay ome and then we get reimbursed from the state so i'm, I'm not overly nervous about it but if something bad were to happen at the same time of course I'll be back in front of you anyway but. I don't have anything else you got yeah we're fine oh no, that's it's working, it's working great Who's next? Possible revenue stream where if we get charged for fire permits, we could, we could we could make some money. Just topped over 250 permits. You can't charge for those. I mean, you could, but it's, no. Yeah. I was I was kind of joking. <laughs> Well, I'm trying to convince Idolize to let me write parking tickets over there, and that'll yeah. that'll uh, cost money. Well, I got this solid it. revenue stream yeah. there on the weekend because they have to have it right away. They call dispatch all the time. Did Mike want to do? Did you want to do your financial? I do whatever. One too. Yeah. I don't know why he's you're on Mike. Yeah. Oh yeah, case is good. Oh, Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thanks, guys. What did you say? Forty-one percent of the year. Yeah. Forty point. But I thought you were at forty-one. I'm almost at forty-five on that one. Why is that? Oh, the auditors is on my line. Oh. That's why. <laughs> so actually, yeah, it didn't go up. Did <laughs> you? You thought that wasn't on your line? Huh? No, I did. Like mine's forty-two. No, it's yeah, you're right on line there. So I mean, that doesn't. There's no big spikes or no. anything at any particular time of the year. My annual training venue burned down, so I don't know what that's going to happen there. Your training venue burned down. The town, the town clerk and tax collectors associations. Oh, yeah. They had their conventions at the Red Jacket. <laughs> so I'm assuming they'll find alternate venues. But if not, you might, that'll save a couple hundred bucks. Because <laughs> I don't stay there. <laughs> All right, any other ones for Mike? 
I know. No. An election's going to be busy, but there's no more after town meeting in this fiscal year. There's nothing else to hit my budget. Really. No more printing. And I went over on printing because the cost of the ballots went up. Cost of everything going up. Well, right. But um, all the other lines are, are, are good. And like I say, with the, the remaining elections that we have are both run by the state, so they'll supply all the ballots. And, so there's no, other than the people time that we already pay for, there's no additional costs. You get your saws with the, the gopher money? I haven't ordered them yet. But I mean, I'm going to go down and get them. I got them right down to Route 25 in Tamworth. In the bridge. Yeah. Great. So if you take a look at mine, my two big items that are going to be, well, not going to be close, they're going to go over. Vehicle maintenance, this is where we've, well, if anybody watched that old movie Dodgeball, it's like dodging a wrench, um, pretty uh, close. So you'll see 82.79% of that's been spent, and I have yet to buy one tire for this winter. Um, not to mention the oil changes and everything else that has to come. This is just keeping the Taurus and the Explorer on the road while we wait for these Tahoes to be outfitted. Uh, so that's gonna that's gonna go over. And the other one is the overtime line is at 62 percent. I'm I spent a year, so I've got about five thousand left in that. Just doing the math, I'm projected to hit about 7,700 over on that going at the rate we are now it does slow down in the winter time the reason biggest reason for that is one we've been sending some guys to training earlier this year but the biggest thing is is that the call outs everything you know and i've told you this before we're handling all of the call out calls after midnight and until 6 30 in the morning there is no other um state police are still down massively and there's no 24-hour support from the sheriff's office. So, um, so every time the phone every time the phone rings at Osby, it's ringing at our houses too. So, um, so that's been not to mention there's other things that have come in that um, you know we just had one of our officers that had a baby the other day, so he's taking some time off of that. And we've got uh, this part-time guy that is working all the hours I can throw at him. No kidding. So, yeah. Love it. Um, so yes, yeah, so we we but these are all things that we have to pay for. So um, yeah, we'll that's where we're at. Well, Bob, I will say from me and from a lot of other people that Madison is the only police department that covers its town without well, thank you without interruption without fail. Um, and I can say that I make the phone calls and there is never any hesitation. Never have to go looking for somebody. So, yeah. well, guys, I appreciate that. With that. Thank you. We have a good crew. Yes, you do. Probably one of the best I've worked with in my career. So, one of them, Josh. I did work with you. Yes. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. So. Are you looking at about 7,700, do you think, on the overtime? At this rate, yeah. So just taking of what we spent to this day, taking that rate. And we did use a lot this past winter uh, in moving forward, you know, to the end of the year. If we, if we keep up the same rate, that's what it'll be. Uh, the summertime, you know, I, I think in the fall... I know my part-timers are going to become less available in the fall, and that's by design. Um, right around September 15th. Right around there, <laughs> give or take a day. Yeah, that's when I'll start taking vacation. Yeah, and, but yes, we do have officers that'll take vacation. You know, Lieutenant and I are, you know, we're both working patrol shifts as well. Um, so we'll do the best we can with what we have, and, you know, I, I don't, 
I don't mind at all handling these calls that come in in the middle of the night. It kind of keeps us involved with the stuff that happens in our town when we, you know, when we're not on the road. So. And what do you think your vehicle, I know it's going to be almost impossible to predict your vehicle maintenance. The vehicle maintenance is, I don't think it's going to get terrible just because that, you know, the fleet that we're coming online with, hopefully by the end of June, should be pretty well tightened up and, and good to go. So aside from, you know, the, the oil changes in the tires, probably... Probably two thousand over just for the tires itself. I think the rest of the regular maintenance we can take care of of what's left. But you know the that that's the only thing that I would be concerned about is is putting the putting the tires on for the winter. Okay. And some of that you know we can try to push to the end to try to get it towards to try to put it on next year's budget. But you can get it to December first. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> hmm? no, no, no. Easy. <laughs> I heard the yes word. <laughs> John. Well, um, for some reason or not, budget sheet we didn't have the percentage where we're at on some of the lines, but uh, the biggest thing is what uh, administration fees. Some of them a little higher than others, but it's because of the way we've been moving personnel around. So it's pretty hard to even look at it from that aspect because the last drawdown it showed that we were at 60% of our overtime, which really isn't too bad anyway. But the whole overall administration looks to be it's going to balance out anyway. So uh, as far as the percentage of the year, we're right there considering the money we've had available from Opera and different aspects to keep some of the cost down on projects we didn't have scheduled so um, then you guys have a list of projects that are started Get that here uh, need to be finished and I just kind of put in there how it was getting funded to the best of my knowledge there's a couple of question marks but I don't know that we uh, the guardrail at Lake Abitash and I mean that uh, Lake Attitash is where it's well. <laughs> East Shore yeah. and uh, the Lake Road is what I meant to say. They both need attention, but I don't really foresee us even getting to those projects this year, to be honest with you, with everything we got going on. We're still waiting on precast for the drainage on East Shore, uh, East Madison, I'm sorry. I'm looking at the list and talking. Uh, then there's a few things in there, as you know, where we stand on the walk path. The town hall wall is just about complete. We got a, look, some, a few caps to put on and landscaping to do and a couple of the other things are just budget but I mean all in all other than keeping our eye on the fuel line and hoping the materials don't increase too much between now and fall for salt and sand. Um, I saw in the and I, I don't want to do this, it's not, but I saw in the paper the other day that Conway was cutting some paving jobs. The whole paving. The whole paving. The whole paving. The whole paving has been canceled for the year. Because they only allocated an extra 40 for fuel. We allocated 20, and we're considerably smaller than they are. So I think they underestimated where fuel was. Well, I mean, it, He's nobody to blame. He's just they're throwing darts at the wall. We don't know if fuel's going to be six months from now. Well, you or know, a month from now. You got to take into consideration, though, that I think they're running over 200 vehicles in this in, yeah. in the town of Conway compared to the amount of vehicles we're running. So the 20,000 our end, our end percentage-wise looks a lot better than 40,000 on their yeah. end. But yeah. you know what I mean. So, well, but you're right. We have no idea. Fuel went up 28 cents over the weekend and started creeping back down again. So. Yeah. Two years two years ago, diesel off road diesel was ninety nine cents a gallon. Yeah. Now it's almost six bucks. What happened? <laughs> there are some projections that may go to nine or ten. So. Yeah. You know it's. Yeah, we're just gonna have to watch. 
you know, all departments, I mean, I, you guys are going to run, you're going to run. The fire department's going to go, we understand that. But anytime you can consolidate something or whatever to save some money, uh, that's going to be, that. that's, we have no control over that. You know, we can kind of chisel money from one line to another line, but boy, five or six bucks a gallon, it goes pretty quick. Well, I will say if we were still leasing out a contract on our rubbish, we'd be getting a huge fuel surcharge oh, on that end. So question. I think the numbers that, uh, you know, with the support of the board and, and moving our own material has really saved us a ton of money already. And it's only going to look better as we go because, you know, we were paying tonnage and then we had to pay so much over a certain price of fuel. And yeah. we're way above that. So... However, people in general could be a little bit more conservative and not produce as much. You well, could still cut down on hauls. One huge thing, John brings it up all the time, since he's been working out there and learned, is uh, you say it all the time, and hopefully whoever's watching glass, gets a glass, glass out of the glass. MSW. Get it, out of your container, get it out of your bag. I hear it all day long. Because that's a, that's a direct it. free charge for us now. We, we grind it ourselves yeah. with the new mower head, and it's like if we take it out of there, the weight hauling it up over that hill yeah. would be incredible at the end of the year. You stand there, you can hear it banging, banging. And I remember once going to Meredith to look at their transfer station years ago. And there's a guy that sits right by that. If he hears a bang, it stops you. You go down and you take your bag out, take the glass out, and he writes you a ticket. Three tickets, your sticker comes off the car, and you don't get to come here anymore. That's kind of being a little tough. Yeah. You know, they decided that the glass is going to go in the pile over there, and we're going to grind, they grind their glass. Mm. But it's a volunteer system in Madison, but you know, yeah. just not let people know. Yeah. Just right. think about the. But it's all of our tax dollars. Exactly. Stuff. exactly. It's every right. exactly. It's yeah. huge. Yeah. Because every time I hear a bang, it's like my cash register here is ringing. I can feel it. Right. It's like you know. You know, it'd be one thing about, about throwing plastic in there because it's light, but you know, the, the glass is heavy as we all know. The glass know. is all heavy. up. It's uh, yeah. and it's fun. There's an awful lot of weight for no reason. We have a fair amount of beer and wine bottles. It's fun to throw them in the pit, too, so <laughs> no. a little frustration. So I drink my beer out of the box. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, okay. yeah. <clears throat> no. um, everything's going fairly well at the transfer station because I have intimate knowledge of it. Um, still people trying to beat us all the time. It's a constant battle. People trying to beat you, trying to... They, run, they see you tied up with somebody and they run circles around and you're trying to stop two people. It's, um, it's tough for you guys too because, I mean, let's face it, the, the only way that we would know exactly what was going in and out is if we had scales, but we don't produce enough to make scales to, to pay for the scales. We, yeah. we, we'd be a hundred years trying to pay for the scale. Yeah. Like, in what system we have, um, I spent some time out there with you guys again this weekend with the different crews and uh, everything that we could possibly do short of taking the glass out, and as we talked about, we're getting a return on the aluminum, we're getting a return on the light iron, we're getting a return on the cardboard. Plastic is just, it's an endless battle because there's just so much of it and the landfills really don't want it. And, you know, so I mean, it, it, we can't bring it to the landfill that we go to. We have to take it to the alternate location. So I mean, there's really nothing else we can do other than getting the containers moved eventually and yeah. working on the traffic flow and some new signage we're, we're working on. So. Yeah, that would probably be a help and because uh, it's tough uh, chasing people after yeah. all. You know, they'll sneak by and go to the brush. Where'd that guy go? To? He's down the brush pit. Yeah, it's busy. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, it's a busy place. Um, this time of year we're averaging about 3,000 cars a weekend. It's a lot of cars. And I've done I've done a math test any number of times, different times of the day, so many cars per minute. We get we average two cars per minute. Three thousand cars a day. Well, about yeah. thirty three hundred last week. How many households do we have in Madison? About, mm -hmm. about six thousand. No. No, 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 no six hundred. Six hundred. I think we have. I think there's nineteen hundred houses in town. But people really? come multiple times. Oh, I see. and then you have contractors. You're giving me another different argument to work with. But. Yeah. So it's a lot of cars. 
and uh, some people come every day. We got some people come every single day. Come Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. They don't want they miss any you, John. Huh? They miss you. They must. <laughs> You gotta be meaner. Yeah, yeah. We got a guy in freedom will lend you for a day or two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Straighten you up right quick. Yeah. Oh yeah. Boy. He scares me. He's yelled at me once. Me twice. too. <laughs> but other than that, it seems to be going Not pretty sure well. It works here. Uh, a guard the but dog. No, guard. The fact that we're hauling our own is a huge difference. It it is yeah. huge. It's uh, it's enormous. Wait, I haven't sat down and gone over the numbers, and it's kind of hard to do that because. We'd have to go back to what I might say it's hard, it was time consuming. So we'd have to go see what the surcharge would be, and we know what we're burning for gallons of fuel and everything. But it, it's an astronomical number that I guarantee it. Yeah, because yeah, he does a minimum of two runs a day. Some days he, some days he can squeeze in. Oh, yeah, he's doing six loads, seven loads a week right now on the average. So, I mean, yeah. that's, you know, and the, the truck's in really good shape right now, so the maintenance is, you know, stabilized yeah. on it. We had one problem with it, but I mean, that's, you know, Unpredictable and uncontrollable, so we know that going in. But uh, all in all, it's, it, I think it's been a huge improvement cost-wise. Yeah. What can we do about glass then? Can is there? I know. Just signage, handouts, sign, something. Signage. There used to be. Um, a lot of people don't know the glass piles where it is. Right. True. But there used to be signs there, and I know they were, they got outdated in a hurry. But that you know, the more this weighs the heavy, you know, the more this will get charged and, you know, you throw that common sense signs at people where the little factoids that this, you know, this, your bag weighs X amount per pound, this goes into your tax bill or you can toss your glass on the other side. Well, the two I dumpsters get. say household waste, correct? Yeah. Yeah. And how about no glass? Well, well, I think, so, I, I think that's on the list. Yeah, it's on the list of our sides, but I, I, I think, I don't know if I was talking to you about it the other day, uh, when this year is a renewal for our stickers, so I thought maybe at the renewal time we could get a, a spreadsheet together, some, you know, I, we'll, we'll I, I think they would the be business. somewhat fictitious numbers, but I think if we gave them an idea to see what it actually costs, because we can't tell exactly how much glass is going in there, there's no way to tell, but we could guess that. No, not so much guess, we can educate it. Yeah, guess you can say a ton of glass costs you this much. Yeah, you know, and, and just so, it, you know, so we, we won't have true exact numbers, but, it, you know, like John said, in comparison of taking a ton of trash out of there, a, a ton of bottles out of there could save up two and four dollars a gallon. Because in the, in the big pit, it doesn't cost us anything. No. So. so and we are collecting, we're making, I don't say we're not making money, we're acquiring money. Last week was a pretty good week. We took in seventeen hundred dollars last weekend mm. on cheese, and I and I still missed a couple of refrigerators in the process and wine coolers. I missed the wine cooler. I said, "What? What is that over there?" Mm -hmm. You find stuff kind of hidden all over. It's you play sort of search and find, kind of walk around the place. Oh, look what I found hidden behind this building. We could put a stick on mustache on Mike and have him hang out there for the day. Let me see guys. We can. Guido. Uh, yeah. Well, you do the best you can with what you got. Yeah. Most people would do so. I guess so. I think uh, they've got an old the difference of the relocation of the containers. And yeah. I think it's a lot more organized now than it was. Oh, of course. You know, it's, and nobody likes change, so you got to get through the change part of it. Yeah. Okay. So. And if you don't come the last half hour of the day, you're fine. If you come in the last half hour of the day, you're waiting in line. Yeah. <laughs> Every single time. Whether we close at noontime, whether we close at yeah, 4 o'clock. He's got to say something. Oh. Go. I just want to say the only the other thing that I have under my department head thing is I'm going to Dingy Machine on Friday to have like a, a walkthrough, for lack of a better. You're almost done with the truck, oh. so he wanted me to come over. Walk, go through it with them to make sure if there was any like light bulb missing or anything like that, they could fix it before it left there. So we're getting real close. Within a couple of weeks, we'll have the truck back. Nice, great. That's okay. all I got. Thanks, man. Um, the truck, John. Oh yes, you guys have that paperwork in front of you. Uh, this was a couple prices I put together uh, to replace the truck that we had the uh, incident with this this winter on the ice and it uh, ended up being cold and there's a quote in there I was trying to get more than one quote obviously for the for the thing uh, uh, for the plow equipment 
But this is the only one I've been able to get back so far. So it was 39000 and some change. And that was, if you read the description on it, was to utilize the, the uh, stainless steel body we have in house and uh, outfit it with plows and wing plow and hydraulic system, spreader controls for the sander. And, uh, and then we were able to find, thanks to the help of the police chief, to uh, McMulkin, they do have their hands on a chassis, or I can get my hands on a chassis that's coming in for $66,000, which would be identical to the last truck we just built that we paid $122,000 for. So this is a much cheaper way to, cheaper route to go. It totals out to $105,000 and some change. And we have, we have a check on hand for $87,000 plus or minus. We got $88,000, but we had a $1,000 deductible, so we need to come up with $17,800 to replace that truck somewhere if we wanted to go this route. In comparison, if we get a, another six-wheel dump truck, we're looking at $265,000 minimum, so, and we wouldn't be able to do anything till town meeting because we can't get into a lease, so. So we need $17,000. Seventeen. Mike, you want to check? Yeah, I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> Seventeen eight sixty three. <clears throat> well, it's definitely the better way to go. It would just be basically committing to it with them. I mean, we the truck isn't even built yet. So it's not like we have to make a decision today, but the only fear I have is if we don't move on it fairly quickly as we know everything's going up as we speak and it's getting harder and harder to get parts for anything so as far as the plow equipment goes if we wait too long we may not get it done before this coming winter um the truck outfitted is 100, 105 yeah 105 315 junk that's with the combination of that plow equipment and the 66,000 for the the uh true cabin chassis but uh, another note was if we went with a if we wait and do it next year those cabin chassis are already up to eighty two thousand dollars so this is a price that they had pre-ordered and uh, Paul LaRoche has been like phenomenal with Bob and I getting stuff that he could find on the old prices and move them to us so And you know, a couple of the guys had some concern about going with another smaller truck because it doesn't carry as much sand. But all in all, now that we have the frames on the grader and we still have the Oshkosh going, we'll, we use it instead of plowing an inch of stormer that we use these smaller trucks, the maintenance is way down on it. And you know, I, I don't feel we get caught with our pants down in a blizzard, let's put it that way, but going with another smaller truck is just a case of strategically spreading out the sand in some. But. I don't think we're really financially in a place to spend two hundred forty-five thousand dollars with eighty-seven thousand dollars in the bank. And I don't, I don't blame the drivers at all. But that big truck twice went down the hill, and once on its side, and once into a tree. Yeah. So John made a great point too when we were talking about it that that might not have happened with one of those smaller trucks. Right. Right. Yeah. They're, they're quicker to get around with the well, only downfall. They're, they're probably quicker to get around with. They are quicker to get around with. It. There's no doubt they're smaller and they're easier. And, it, and you know, with the problems with the changing. And four-wheel drive. Yeah, they're four-wheel drive. The changing with the CDL laws, it's it's harder to get part-time help because, you know, anybody that's got a CDL, they, they, they either got a full-time job or they're not really good at what they do anyway. So, you, you know what I'm saying? Unless you can pick up a retired guy like we have. And, uh, you know, and it'll, some of the towns are even sending people out to school to get their CDL now and making them sign a contract like when they go to the academy because it's so expensive and it's all part of the process now, so. Well, that's, that's the federal government. Can we find 17863? I found it already. Yeah. He ain't going to want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> but we got we got 50,000 in our road to this on. I don't know if that's 100% accurate, John. We've got money moving around to cover opera and stuff, so I, I'm not sure that that's a... Uh, and you have a couple jobs on there that are going to be funded out of the road improvement on that list I gave you. 
Well, we can find a couple of lines. Oh, I think, uh, I mean, I mean, there's some, granted, I know we're only not even halfway through the year yet, but there's money in vehicle repairs. There might be, there might be, there might be 10 grand left in, in that, or five grand, another 10 grand up in road improvements. I think we can find it. Be honest with you. I don't disagree with you. I think now that the, the department is combined, there's a lot of avenues that we're saving on that aren't going to reflect to those numbers yet because we just don't have enough data on it, like calling the, the rubbish and stuff. You know what I mean? Well, it's not like we can't. See, for instance, in, recy in the recycling line, which we we had thirty-three thousand dollars in that line. We only spent twelve hundred bucks. Right, because we're getting m money back on the cardboard that's offset, and because cardboard has come back. If nothing else is a plus of COVID, with the online shopping, the cardboard actually has value to yeah, it. We where, have a lot where of we used to pay a hundred and ten dollars a ton to get rid of it, and we're actually getting we're not getting a huge return, but at least we're getting a return. We're not yeah. paying for it. Exactly, we're not paying, and we're actually getting something back. I think it's up to forty forty four dollars a ton we're getting back on. On it now, but you know we still have the cost of hauling. I mean, there's a number of lines in there where you may have, you may nick them for five thousand, five thousand, ten thousand, and there's your money. You know, we could nick a few lines. Yeah, absolutely. It's yeah. just uh, you know the the only gamble to that is if fuel does go through the roof, we're yeah. going to. But again, that you started the conversation of the meeting with the fact that we don't have control over that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, no. I mean, worst case scenario. Uh, no, it's not worried about worst case. I don't think we can afford to not buy another vehicle. I don't think you can get through a winter without it. I think if we wait a year, just the difference in the price of the chassis is more than what we're looking to try and find to offset it. Oh, absolutely. You know, absolutely. Eight, absolutely. 82 and 66, you know, you're, you're right there. Yeah, you know, you could be waiting six months for a... Well, we could be waiting. Uh, for the ship to come in. Yeah, you know, this, this process of the whole thing is these people... McMulkin had the statement, so they bought a hundred of these chassis, and they actually have a, a chance of getting them. Not all of them. They're not going to get the ones that are a little bit bigger than the one we're looking at, but they may not get any chassis next year. True. So, you know what I mean? The, 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 this truck is supposed to be start being built in a couple of weeks, and, and I tentatively have it on hold just because we've done business with them before. But. Uh, you know, there's a possibility that if we miss this rounds of, cha of chassis, there might not be any available for two years. Yeah. What do you need? And for I'm not trying to scare yeah. anybody by any means. It's just reality. Well, what do you need for a commitment? What do they need for a commitment? Um, I just verbally gave them one, and I told them I was going to talk with you guys. And I, I'd still like to wait before we uh, make a motion to go with like the plow frames. Get another quote on it. I've been just waiting for it to come back, and hopefully it's a few grand cheaper. I, I don't. I have no. No way of telling right, because, because the, the truck itself is how much? Just the 66. truck. Sixty-six. Sixty-six, and the frames were like thirty. Well, the the whole outfit. Oh, Sixty-six. So I mean, we could take some of that insurance money and pay for the chassis right off the top. Just the chassis. Yeah. yeah pay for that. And get yeah. That, get Which that I don't think we're going to have to do right now, anyway. It's, it's probably not going to be available for three months, so it's not like we're going to spend no. it today. Yeah. So usually I mean, with Paul, if you. You just tell him you want it, he'll put your name in it, and it's yours. Yeah, he said that today because he said it, it can't get sold unless it goes through him, and, and we happen to want the red one, and there's only one red one of it. Well, we want it blue, but there's no blue one, so the red, we have a red one, we might as well go with the red. Got it. Yeah, the rest are all white. Yeah, we'll find the one. I mean, yeah. We'll into the last quarter of the year, we know we pretty much know where we are in the last quarter. And surprised and I don't know why that we've been ahead of the curve all year we usually we don't usually get ahead of the curve until middle of the, I know but I, I, I'm I just asking John why because yeah, in the all the years that I've been here we've always been a little bit percentage wise behind yeah. until about August yeah and we've been ahead of all year all year right from the opening gun yeah I don't know why uh, I'm waiting for the, something to drop, some hammer to drop or something. Good department or, heads. That's it. There it is. <laughs> yes. I think it was the taxpayer, to be honest with you. With yeah. that, they have proved a pretty good budget. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They almost never say no. I mean, I can't remember the last time this, they asked to cut our budget. Who? The, the taxpayer. The taxpayer. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I, you know, I talked to a lot of other directors and road agents and... I have to say the taxpayers of Madison, if they, my personal feeling is if you bring them an idea 
and have the numbers available that they can understand them. That the, the taxpayers of Madison have been phenomenal with the support for my department as well as I, I think I can speak for the other department heads, but it's like I don't want to speak for them, you know. But I, I, I just, I really enjoy working with at town meeting the way the taxpayers support us if it's a good idea. No, definitely. Um, I guess one other thing I want to talk about on your thing. So we had got word today from our attorney um, that we can't spend that conservation. So our last attorney said we could, and this attorney says we can't. So we got to go through and find whatever money that we spent without permission from the Conservation Commission. Okay, the overage. The overage. And we got to give it back. But that's, I don't have the numbers on that, but. So, um, so for instance, the boat ramp. Did they put a number on that? I want to say it was 7,500. For the first section or the second section? The first, the first section. The first section. Okay. The second section was six thousand. So that we're going to come up with six thousand for that. And there was gravel and things too in there. How much is the dam going to cost? Um. So did they put a number on that too? The dam too? Um. Uh, no, I think. Was combined. I think it was the boat ramp dam project. And they just capped it at seventy five hundred dollars. They offered that much. I think what her point was loud two weeks ago was that she thought it was going to the dam only, and that's what she that's what they thought the money was intended towards, not the ramp, but that they were willing to spend the money on the dam, so maybe there could be somewhere a convincing to call it a wash if you know you know what I mean. Well, you know, I don't want to go for, I, w I want to kind of go by the minutes of the meetings, yeah, what, what was approved, and, mm -hmm. you know, um, we'll go by that. Um, I, I find it, well, whatever. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I find it greatly disappointing, actually, that the Conservation Commission doesn't want to do conservation-related activities, but... Well, I was just going to say, I mean... What if we presented this whole thing to the Conservation Commission as a group and see where they actually, how they actually feel about it? Is, is mm. every member of the Conservation Commission in, in agreement with her thoughts? I mean, we don't know that. That's just, or I don't know that. Mm. I mean, yeah, I think that's, I would be happy to do that if we, like, I think they're on the, the schedule for, um, July, June, what? Fourteenth or so. The in two weeks, they're on the schedule to come in because they want to present um, purchasing the chain of ponds property. I think. But correct so, me if I'm wrong. But isn't that money for conservation purposes? So if we're doing projects that uh, are conservation purposes, should we at least ask them if they would support it before we worry about how we're going to uh, pay it back? Yeah. Oh, certainly. If that's think, legal, yeah. I don't even know. I'm yeah. just saying. Oh, certainly. I mean, I, I don't think we did any projects that yeah. didn't have conservation background and maintenance to conservation areas, so. Yeah, I, I know we didn't, but, um, and a lot of the things got approved, so uh, the, um, so. I, I think before the next meeting, we need to know how much was actually approved based on the minutes and then actually how much we spent in total, mm -hmm. yeah. or they gave us, so to speak. And then we'll talk about the balance, whatever the balance is. Uh, there's no list yet. But in the meantime, we gotta pay for, oh, we may have already paid for the, the last few pieces for the... Um, no. no, we haven't been billed for that yet. We haven't been billed for the... The extra concrete so. for the ramp. The extra slab. I don't think we've got an invoice for it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and as far as and I, I'm just going on your list, John. The <coughs> the um, 
And I guess uh, the the railing at the Historical Society, um, she had mentioned that, that we didn't get approval for that. For I the think there was. In general, she was saying. They, for the stairs in general? She said they didn't approve the stairs at all. But um, the original minute, the, the minutes that it was talking about somehow helping with erosion, fence was okayed, and then eventually, throughout the year, it got down to where, the way I read it, it said that they were willing to support the stairs, but it didn't have a price or anything like that. It just said that that was there. Okay, but I guess um, the railing, so the railing, which everybody is asking for, um, I don't, I don't know if we're obviously not going to take that out of conservation. I guess we'll talk to them in a couple weeks. Yeah, I'll see if I can uh, find out what this story is with the price on that railing from the fabricator. Um, and the other thing was the the railing walk, uh, the bri the uh, the railing at the dam. Yeah. Um, we were, you know, that that's that. That's in rough shape. I don't know if you guys, oh, no, everybody's down there. Well. I mean, you're going to lean on that too hard, you're going to end up in the lake. So. She said they approved money for the dam, though. I mean, so that would be, I don't know what the value was, but again, that's just probably something that we need to. Yeah. That's the only reason I had put that down as conservation, because yeah. we did have approval for yeah. the dam, like Bob said. But, but I have no idea what the value was. I don't go to those meetings, so. Mm. So I guess we just got to keep an eye on that. We'll talk to them about that. Um, and those are unspent anyway. I mean, those those jobs haven't even taken place yet. Either right, the right. Right. So I just don't want to snarl, like say that we're going to do it and, or fix it, and it ends up costing us, you know, a couple thousand dollars, and then yeah. they coming in here saying we're stealing their money. So. Certainly not my intent ever to. I mean, I think we're going to have to take the money for the railing at the historical society out of something because it's a safety issue. So we have to finish the project one way or another. Whether we take it out of road and prove it up and cross off a different project, it's, it's got to be done. Yeah. And as far as I'm concerned, unless we, I don't think it's the the guardrail on East Shore and the guardrail on the Lake Road. I would scratch those off completely this year. Yeah, they're not unsafe. They just, yeah. uh, I've been approached about the looks of them. Yeah, by a few no, people I mean, that's they, the reason. They are horrible you know. and they do need to be replaced, but um, it might be something we put in next year's budget or go for a water article depending on how much it is. So the wall at the transfer station and the roof at the transfer station, we're going to get those out of the trust fund. Those we'll get that this year. The paving's looking good. That's paid for in a warrant, warrant article. Miscellaneous culverts, which we've uh, we've identified, I think five culverts that need to be replaced this year. Yeah. We have the culverts, so I don't think that's going to cost us anything. No, no, that's why I said some of that money uh, is in the culvert line is taken out of it, but uh, it should those should have been paid for. Yeah. Um, uh, winter sand. That's all set. Well, sand shed. Oh yeah, we're we're supposed to get a price on one of those. I've been trying to get a price on a quantum head from Coleman for over a year, and uh, I don't know. What, we gotta look at a different avenue. It's probably gonna be a warrant article. Yeah. Um, for a salt shed. Yeah, so a salt shed. Yeah. <clears throat> We've been dodging that bullet for years. Long time. So that'll probably be a warrant article. I think so, yeah. yeah. Well, Freedom, would you say just approved one last this past year? Were you, how much was that? I, when I was there, it was like 350000 or Some might have been just, yeah, I think, yeah I, think that's what it, I think that's what it was. I think that's what it was. But that was for a full on building. That wasn't a, that's not a con, that's not a Quonset hut. That's no, a, I think it's a, it's a full on building. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah we're, we're going to have to look at that and see what the best thing to do with it is. Mm -hmm. uh, road greetings out of budget, pitching. Okay. Town Hall Wall that's coming out of Arpa. Walk path. So the only other thing on the walk path is we gotta buy some I beams. I beams and planking, yeah, once we get the uh, 
calculations back on the span. So we're in good shape. And those are all the projects we got going. That's a lot to do. Just saying. It's a busy summer. <laughs> it has been already. <laughs> Well, that's good. And we have no idea when they're paving. We haven't heard anything from them. I haven't. Uh, I'm pretty sure they the same people were using Head Conway, so there's probably going to be some time. Some room. Some <laughs> yeah. yeah. Did we get a list this year on the state paving in town? Are they doing anything in town this year? I don't believe so. The only thing I've got notified, John, is they got a, uh, they were looking for some wetlands information. Uh, if I had any information, they're going to do the bridge at the uh, Purity Springs, but uh, on 153. But I, they haven't sent me anything about payment. Yeah. Well, we would have got it by now. Yeah. So um, we're um. No, I'm going to do one good piece. Linda, you you did a, you did a spreadsheet or something yesterday for ARPA, the yeah. ARPA money. It's on that second page. Of yeah. So we're going to be looking at. So we only got $43,066.41. Potentially. So that first 2021 expended, that's in the. That's like gone. That's the $44,000 that we spent and reported already. Mm -hmm. The 2023 projects are money that we may not. Um, that we've already paid out. These are the, the generators and what we've already paid for the retaining wall and culverts and all that. Um, the hydro cedar and that sweeper we committed to. Um, we haven't paid them for it yet, but that's definitely like we're paying that. Um, and then the next column with the amount committed is similar to that. That's what we still owe on those projects. Um, the so we have 43000 left? Right. The only thing that's that's kind of hanging out there is that last one, the, the town hall lower parking lot. That was, I guess, a number that you wanted, John, about paving those. I didn't really give it a number, but that's the thir that's thirty six thousand three hundred that John Sear came up with for a estimate that I took out of there. So is, that was is this money used going to be used for safety purposes? Is that what it's for? No, no this, this is this just is for general government purposes. We well, can use it for. Truck. Well, I was just looking at that number, that forty three thousand. But uh, if all those projects that we did for the boat ramp and all that stuff, if you had to, you could probably take that money out of APA to pay the back to the Conservation Commission. Yep. I know the pavilion was a project that was slated. For yeah, I, and I, I really would love to spend or save as much as we can, but, um, you know, apparently there's other places that are saving up so we can buy land to preserve it. So we can't do conservation projects. So we got to pay them back. Uh, just um, so yeah, would, I, I would love to get I, I'd love to get started on that pavilion. I mean, we have kind of started on it. I know um, Adam was going to talk to Jake yeah. Bowie. He hasn't got a return on it yet. He hasn't got inf no information as of our last meeting. There was no information? No. And Susie was here to give an update on REC, too. That's why she's... Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. You wouldn't know what I was... Oh. It's so fun. <laughs> <laughs> but we, I kept thinking we were going to get there faster than we're getting there to let her. I don't know. So we got that $43,000 left. Um, you know, we're gonna try. We got till how long? When? Do we, when? Oh, 2024. Oh, yeah, we're oh okay. Time time. But that's a snapshot of where we're at right now. So that's good to see that. And John, I agree that we we do have some of that. We can use that for projects. And you know, if the conservation commission doesn't want to help out with the the boat ramp and the whatever the dam, the dam, <coughs> or the boat ramp, or whatever else, then we got. We can pay it back with that forty-three thousand. 
How are the boat permits? I mean, non-resident boat permits going? I don't know the number, but we got several. I want to say we've at least a thousand dollars in the last week. So at least. Oh, them. another thing I wanted to ask the police department was, um, I know you did it last year and it worked out pretty good. I thought about. Are you going to do that again this year? Write tickets and say if you come in and. Yes. Pam. Yep. Same thing applies. Oh, yep. okay. Good. Okay. I told people that wasn't going to happen. What's that? I scared him. I was tougher. I told him that wasn't going to happen this year. I said uh, last year was your only time to get well, one. Well, we might not say that public. No. Me You're going to get one. <laughs> Me. Yeah. When does a harder ass than I? <laughs> <laughs> Next year, there's no excuse. But if you're not from Madison, we'll be happy to take your hundred bucks. Um, anything else with the budget? So, so we did, and I will say that we did take about eight thousand. We figured about eight thousand dollars worth of tickets for the boat ramp last year. Yeah, I guess I'll we that. figured that. So that kind of offset the price a little bit. Obviously, you can't put it directly in there, but that offset that first half. Uh, offset that first half. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm sure we'll take in at least eight thousand dollars this year. So that that may not be a bad report to put in the town report. Yeah, amount of income, extra type of income that we're taking in, and, and where that pigeonhole, where they came from. Mm -hmm. The only problem that I can see with the boat ramp is they're already washing it out. Yeah. Well, <coughs> unfortunately. We can't find them for power loading, but um, can we get? Goob has seen some literature on putting um, their chains own, chains there, so if they power load, they damage their own boats. But I don't know what the liability would be on yeah, that. I wouldn't want to be that. Which I don't know. I mean, if you warn them and tell them there's chains installed, we'll do, that's the answer I haven't got. I was going to try. They've and call done them it in other like, other places, I know, because it's a problem. I don't see if it's I don't see it's any different than putting a speed bump in the middle of a road. You speed, you know, you go over that at 50 miles an hour, you're gonna wreck your car. Mm. It's kind of the same thing. There's no one liability is on town property. I don't know if we could check with Hab Patrol or uh, uh, Marine Patrol. I mean, uh, uh, um, Fish and Game and see if they have any. Probably DES would. Um, DES. They would be the ones to. Because they do make them. But they're only gonna do it once. Huh. And John, I don't think you guys need to get back in the water for the dock, but is there any way to put any more gravel? Because I did see a, this past weekend somebody almost take a tumble because now there's... In the hole? Well, yeah, that yeah. was a gap because somebody yeah. yoked the dock oh. away from the, the oh. bank. Actually, what happened, yeah, somebody left their boat tied somebody to it and back. pulled away. Oh, yeah, and pulled away and yet yoked it probably a good foot. From the shore now. Mike, seeing how you ain't doing anything tomorrow, do you think you could shoot down there? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yoke it back. Yeah, I'll tie up the time. I don't yeah. He doesn't need a day off. I'll take a look at it, Mike. We might even be able to pull it back into place from the shoreline. If they pulled it out, we might be able to get it back. Pulled out about a foot. Yeah, I know. It was really nice the way. Oh, it was great. We had it. And no, we could spend some time down there too, and. We can. I mean, last year we, we could publicly admonish some people that uh, throttle up while trying to get there on their trailer. Maybe it'll start a little bit of a reputation. Well, there's certainly enough signs that say no power loading. Well, there's also speed limit signs, and we write speeding tickets yeah, every day. Yeah, and not for nothing. Well, not every day. I don't know who was telling me, and I don't want to throw stones, but um, somebody said they saw a Marine Patrol loading up out there last year. No, I don't know if it was in our lake, but somebody took. No, it was uh, our lake. Oh, it, it was that ramp. Because somebody had a video of them doing it somewhere else. And Marine Patrol was power loading. Yeah. They're both. <laughs> anyway. They still have cranks on those things, right? Yeah, they do. Okay, just, just checking. Probably some of them electric even. I was just going to say that. Most of them probably are electric. So do you guys have any more questions on the budget overall or ARPA? No, I'm pretty satisfied. Linda, do you have anything to add? She's just gonna when we get home, she's gonna yell at me. <laughs> but, but she'll do it nice. Certainly so. Can we send yeah. Madison TV home with you guys? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. She'll do it nicely. I just wanna watch it. I don't want, so we'll go to department head. Can, 
can we start with Susie? Yeah, can we? Do yeah, that? That's, 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 I'm sorry. I, you this could have gone. been great. I'm going to start drinking box wine, I swear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Bring it here. So, uh, Recreation Committee. Yes. Um, I'm here to talk trash um, about the trash barrels on Brookfield <laughs> and the removal of said trash barrel. You mean, like, totally get them out of there? Or? Totally remove them. Um, my concern is I'm trying to solve a problem before it happens with the baseball league in the evenings and the summer program during the day. If there is overflowing trash, I know that it's not something that gets tended to daily. Um, and since alcohol is allowed on Brookfield for those games and events, I don't want it. Actually, it's not. not. Nope. <laughs> it should be. If people negative. are drinking at said games and events and throwing their Arizona iced tea cans in the barrel or leaving them around the field, that's not something I want the children to be exposed to at 9 a.m., nor do I want to get there early and be responsible for cleaning up the field. Adam did mention having a barrel for the Madison Rec Department in the shed that I could use for our trash, whether it be for arts and crafts or lunches, and then I'll be responsible for the removal of the trash on a regular basis, and the barrel will go away in the shed daily. Um, if we could enforce a carry and carry out policy, like at Silver Lake, and maybe levy a fine for people who leave trash, that would be... Yeah, helpful. it's real wicked hard to do because... Well, this actually will lead into my topic as well. We were segue. Already, yeah. Yes, it's a beautiful segue into what I was going to talk about as well, but go ahead, continue. No. So, uh, we are actually, Mike was, and I have both noticed that uh, the upper field has, uh, upper field especially, has started to get a local reputation as being a dog park. Yeah. Uh, where you can take your dog to um, exercise. exercise. And the wall field being used as well. That's yeah. So, we think it, it should, I mean, it is a town property, and the other ones on the lake especially have the green kiosk that has the rules on them, um, and I think it's it's time we put one at Burkfield as well, and, uh, you know, I think the trash bales are well on point as well because there's, there's none at the beaches either. Not to say this is not trash thrown around, but it's not bad. Though. <laughs> no, but there, there's there is no listing of rules there, so there is plausible deniability for the softball league or you know that go in and pop a few natty ices and throw them in the trash. Yeah, but, there's I mean, no drinking on town property except for Old Humway. Correct, and even then, that gets a special waiver each year. So correct. I mean, there's yeah, there's for, yes yeah, for a short period of time. Right. So, I mean, that's something, you know, if we go in and try to enforce that sort of thing, it's going to be, you know, I didn't know. Yeah. You know, and that's the first word on our complaint is whether they knowingly did it. So, uh, so, so I guess I think you're onto something there because I think the trash barrels are there, so they're going to obviously, people are going to throw their trash in it. Mm -hmm. If they're not there, hopefully they will take them out. Hopefully. Um, but I think it'd be kind of a, you know, when the softball league's there or whatever, the men's softball, they're not going to throw, you know, there's so many people there, you know, if one guy throws his cans on the, he's not going to throw them on the ground. Everybody else is going to see it. And, you know, well, that and, I mean, there's been some, we've had some issues with the softball league over the years. <coughs> and, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it's their, their, the line that they are walking is getting thinner each year, it seems. So, um I think there's a reason they play in Madison because they've been booted out of other places. So, you know, I think there needs to be a lot more enforcement, um, and I, I'll be happy to give Alan for a call and let him know <coughs> his pleasure. And so, to answer your question, um, I get we'll do that tomorrow. I think, and we'll um, we'll empty that barrel. And we can uh, empty that <coughs> barrel, and you can have um, it. You can have it. The and we can put it in the. You have a key to the shed or whatever if you want to use We're it. We're getting there. Yeah. I mean, we still have three weeks before the key okay. need to be in hand. But uh, are you saying that you're going to empty the trash after every game? No. We're going to no. take the trash barrel out of there. We're going to take a trash barrel, and that's going to be for you guys. Yeah. And we'll take them right out of there. We're going to take the trash barrels right off the field. Awesome. Yeah, Adam and I had that conversation last week, and uh, yeah. that I, I've been trying to get them out of there for a while for that reason. Yeah. Because we've even got people that 
I don't know where they're coming from, but if they go to the transfer station on Sunday afternoon and it's closed, they see to find that barrel because they're going home and they don't want to take it with them. So yeah. we see it during the summer that Mondays, it's usually overflowing. Yeah. So yeah, we'll take it out of there tomorrow and it'll be gone and then we'll make sure that you, <coughs> so when you start up, when you get the key, whatever, if we can get with Linda, we'll make sure we have a trash barrel for you. Awesome, and I'm authorized to use the dumpster behind yeah, Absolutely, the yeah. Raise okay. your right hand. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we need to come up with verbiage for this. For this song. Yeah, I'll, and I'll. Uh, I think it'll mostly be the same thing, except, yeah, no beaches, except right? for no life guards on duty and swimming at your own risk. So yeah. <laughs> well, there isn't one there either. So. Well, there was quite a bit of ponding on the field last year during the chicken barbecues. Michael, yeah. remember? Oh my gosh. And plenty of swimming and chances to be had, but. Just a quick question: Are sure. dogs not allowed at Burfield? Nope. I don't currently have a dog, but if someone was to bring a dog during the program, do I have the authority to ask them to leave? Correct. There's no yeah. leashed service dogs are the only dogs allowed on town property. Okay. Um, I can tell you, I see dogs out there every single day. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that's kind of what we're getting at. Yeah. Somebody was just trained in one on the lower field just before the meeting. Yeah, so no, they're, they're not supposed to be any dogs out there. What's that? Yes, I'm sure it's the one that's been using it. That I've well, and there's been with. there's been more than one, and you know, yeah, I've seen several different yeah folks, and I guess we do got to stop that because I don't want to be walking and dog crap. You know? don't do. Yeah, and I don't think the little leaguers want to be sliding no. in it. So yeah, we'll take care of that, and there are no dogs allowed on it. Great. And I will just say. If you have an issue with one of the taxpayers or one of the people on the field, don't have feel free to call Bob. Oh, that's what we do at the transfer station. But if try to get their plate number, and these yes, guys will awesome. take care of any issue we have. Oh, and even if we're right here, we'll be happy. I just come up to the fence. Bob. Yeah, yeah that'll work. <laughs> take a rock and uh, <laughs> take a rock and throw it at the window. We'll answer it. <laughs> no problem. Anything else on that's the rack? Easy enough. Uh, Bob's? So other than the green sign, um, Mike was down last week at the Napwater certifications for his canine and achieved every certification that it was available to the dog. So Excellent. Maverick flew through. Did he drive him? Yeah. Uh, so, and speaking of the canine, we are looking to do another raffle this year, similar to last year. We'll actually add a second, pra second place prize this year. We've been in touch with Serotac. They were the ones that um, provided the guns last year. They're going to do that again this year. Um, but we do need another. We did a raffle permit last year. We'll need to do that before we're able to get up and going so if that's all right with mm -hmm. the board I would like to get that it did pay for uh, the dog and it paid for the training last year so it worked and the, the equipment for the cruiser so it worked out really well I'm trying to keep this a budget neutral program so. did you ever come up with a vest for a member uh, I should be here any day oh, okay let's do every any day yes yeah. good for uh, it that's it. John? We discussed 90% of it, but uh, I did the, found out this late this afternoon that our truck is um, out having the plow put on it, the pack and rec truck, so that'll be available as soon as I line up the paperwork with the trust fund. And the finance? Yeah. Okay. But it's no, uh, the finance company, but it's no rush. They probably. I was going to speak to you about it tomorrow, but I'm just throwing it out there. So it's all painted and all dolled up, and they will put the plow and bed liner in it today, I think, as we speak. So. Um, I'm sorry, John, off the, the boat. Yes. The boat. The boat. Uh, I've been in touch with the marina. We are going down Thursday around 11 a.m. to grab it. But does it come with a skipper hat? If it doesn't, I'm going to get one. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to get a Gilligan sun hat I for might have one in the closet. So. And I got free supplement. Yeah. <laughs> that wouldn't surprise me. But you had to pay for that one, though. Don't laugh. Why are we running around on the island? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There'll be nobody to save you. 
Yeah. Three hour tour. Yeah. Excellent. Um, John, did you have anything else? No, I'm, that's it for me. Other everything else we talked about that I can think of. John Aruda. I'm all set. I've had enough today. Mike Morrow. Well, we already talked about the boat ram dock. We'll get that fixed up. And to go on record, uh, since we were talking about the Conservation Commission meetings, um, I just will go on record that a select board member will no longer attend the meetings, that if they would like to bring something to our attention, they can attend our meetings. Since uh, RSA does not call for it, um, and two weeks ago's meeting um, was pretty much told that uh, like we, or I, or we had stolen money from them. And um, if, if they have things for us, I think they can bring it to us. I don't think the select board needs to go to their meetings. And that may just be my personal opinion, but it is supported by RSA. Um, we'll see how that goes. Jimmy? No. I'm going to, I, I don't know, I'm not going either. It'd certainly be up to John if John wants to be the... Not good enough. Yes, you do. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you do. I got enough. I don't want more. Um, I have one quick thing here. So, I was kind of a little taken aback a couple weeks ago, too, with the, the whole Conservation Commission uh, asked saying that we took their money and wanted wanted it back and I actually had talked to Bill because Bill Lord was on the Conservation Commission he was the Sluckman's rep to the Conservation Commission um, during that time period and all that happened and I'll be completely honest I was on the Conservation Commission uh, before that um, I didn't want to be on it I, I was even thinking about not uh, uh, being a Sluckman anymore or, or being on that because just because I had to go to conservation commission meetings, I was on there for um, several years, and I don't think they uh, met their um, statutory obligations. Every time I went to uh, the meetings, I mean, I, we're talking going back years, asking. I, they don't. They uh, nobody on the conservation commission here um, knew how much money they had or what the monies they had, the accounts that, that were there. Um, I explained this all to Bill um, Lord. Um, we got accused I, uh, before that, and last week we got accused of um, not supporting them and anything that they've done over the last few years. I, I asked for examples on what um, I didn't support them on or the, the board didn't support them on. Um, they couldn't give one example, and, and for all the years that I was on there, I never saw them um, present anything that was conservation related. But then again, I asked, I asked Bill on his thoughts, um, and I want to just briefly summarize what um, he had told me. Um, and he wrote that conservation funds are raised by the taxpayers, and they are not the Madison Conservation Commissions. Um, and I looked into that, and that, that's true, but they are the, the conservation commissions. And I've, after reading the, the RSA and the statutes, um, they have a lot of autonomy. Uh, they, ha they, they can create an account uh, which they can spend out, out of without uh, saying anything to the Sluckman or, or anybody else. Um, the, ex uh, the authority to expend funds, is this is coming from uh, his words, uh, and the forest management accounts were never defined in the Warren Articles, which established them over 20 years ago. As a result, the council told uh, Mr. Lord that by default, the Board of Selectmen is the authority um, to spend that money. Bill, as a Selectman representative of the Madison Conservation Committee, tried to ensure they, they knew of all projects and they approved those expenditures. See below this low. So, see below this when he was here. And we're going to get these numbers this week, I think. Um, and exactly what they said, and we got the minutes. And I have reviewed some of the minutes and um, through, but uh, um, the brine tanks uh, were asked for by the Madison Conservation Commission. They um, they started this whole effort. 
Um, that was in the January 2020 minutes. Uh, the dam and or boat. Uh, da boat, dam and boat ramp repairs um, that was in September 2020 page 2 and November 2020 page 3 um, Madison Conservation Commission uh, lauded by the town for willingness to recently spend money for conservation efforts and I want to go back um, I, I heard several times at town meeting when I was there about how much money the Conservation Commission had um, and never spent any of it and actually were telling us to, you know, you guys need to do spend something, do some conservation related work. Um, and there was another Brian money support again in May of 2021, page four in June 2021. They also just suggested land use change tax account be used. Um, SLAM and SLBC support gift because the conservation funds were finally being used for actual conservation activities. That was in June 2021, page three minutes. Uh, Madison uh, Historical Society Bank erosion support because of access to Cascade Trail. Originally to be sprit rail fence, but changed to staircase in January of 2021. Um, per se 36A, the Conservation Commission can direct funds in a conservation account. They have one. It has $1,200 in it. Per RSA in it. RSA does not say anything about other accounts. Example, land use change tax, forest management, etc. As we talked about last week, there's six accounts. And Bill's research, when he was on the Conservation Commission um, and talked to our attorney, and going back to the statutes when the, those accounts were created, again, our attorney said that there was no agents to expend listed on that on those accounts. So by default, the selectmen were agents to expend. Talking to our new attorney just um, today, he said that all accounts created for the Conservation Commission were completely in their hands, that we were not to touch them without their approval. That, that's, that's what's changed from this attorney to the last attorney. Um, so, again, and I agree with this. This is Bill's wording, and I 100% I agree. The Madison Conservation Commission has used the land use change tax and the forest management accounts for their own slush fund for the items they have wished to fund in the past year. During Bill's tenure as the Board of Selectmen Rep on the Madison Conservation Commission, Marsha nor Noreen never once, to my knowledge, received the accounts to see how much money was in them. Bill built a spreadsheet in the back of the account book, which we have a big, thick binder account book for this that he all went through, uh, with monthly bag stays showing the important Warren article since the creation of the commission over 35 years ago. Again, they never looked at it. I can say they never looked at any of the bills uh, or any of the monies in the accounts the whole, for as many years as I was on the Conservation Commission. I had to ask and they had no idea. I still think they don't have any idea. <clears throat> there was accumulated approximately $350,000 between all the conservation accounts, all six accounts. Tax mere and this is, again, I agree with this. This is Bill's wording, and I've said this many times. Taxpayer money ought to be used, not just sitting around for years waiting for a piece of property to purchase. The Madison Conservation Commission is not the Madison Trails and Land Acquisition Committee. They ought to be doing actual conservation projects. I agree. When I... When Bill uh, actually talked them into or talk, told, asked them to do some conservation work, the town responded with applause at town meeting. I don't know if any of you were at that town meeting, but they did applaud for all the uh, work that the Conservation Commission had done, and they were very happy with what they had done. Um, after 10 years of fighting with them, sounds like they just want to go back to their old ways. Too bad for us taxpayers and the town's conservation needs. I agree 100%. Well, so do I. So we're going to apparently be meeting with them in two weeks, I hope, here. Um, I look forward to what they have to say. That's all I have to say. 
சொல்ல At your last meeting, you guys um, talked about the compost pile, and Paulette Lowry wants to come back next week to talk about putting it where they originally asked, not over the other section. It's giving you a heads up that I told her she needed to come in and ask, but she asked me to just kind of put a bug in your ear. So uh, there's the bug in your ear. Well, <clears throat> if you want an answer from me, it will go nowhere near the Veterans Memorial. It does not belong there. And this is a pile for them to compost new material. It's what is what I gathered from the meeting when they were here requesting the granite. This is not to store compost for them to use. This is to make compost from their clippings. So they can use it. Again. Okay. And with the bear issues that we've had this year, with rodents, with animals, I don't want it anywhere near this building, nor do I want it an interrupting the view of that memorial, which a lot went into. I don't think that a compost pile or composting pile needs to be anywhere near it. I'll throw in my couple of cents on it. I was under the impression that this was going to house compost that they were going to acquire, done, and they were going to use it for their gardening purposes. I had no idea they were going to bring raw material in and wait for the compost because it's going to be sitting there in a pile and unless we get the highway department to flip it around to turn it over because that's how that works <laughs> I'm asking no huh? oh, no. <laughs> don't put me in charge oh, no. no and I don't want to do that I, I there's no reason why it's not I see in my mind they were going to use it for gardening purposes and they were going to go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth oh. and that's why we're going to put it by the telephone pole out there now I find out today that it's just raw compost. Well, we got tons of it down at the transfer station. So I was to come and get it. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I can go with behind the f fire department. I mean, there's it's not like they're going to go back. They're going to bring one, some amount of clippings and put it over there. I, I don't. I'm not a fan of it. Uh, I agree. With 100% of that, but I guess we'll wait in two weeks for... Or do you want me to kind of give her a heads up on what your conversation was tonight to see if she still yeah, really wants to bother yeah. that? Because you, you, you don't... You could run deflector for us. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just also... Make friends tonight. Two... So last week I met with... Um, they had a... We had a Conservation Commission meeting, but it wasn't really a meeting because there wasn't a quorum of the Conservation Commission at the McNair Conservation Easement at uh, Derrick and Pond. I was there. Um, the Derrick and Pond Conservation, or the McNair Conservation Easement on Derrick and Pond that Thadden is currently cutting. Um, Marsha, Noreen, Mark Olson, myself, um, John was there, uh, t Tim Nolan, the, the town forester. Um, Thadden has already started cutting. They'd started cutting that day. Um, apparently the Conservation Commission wanted to present um, some alternatives to them on cutting. That, that I, I gotta say, that that's private property. I mean, we all know this. Mm -hmm. um, Apparently, Marsha, I proposed to Linda this week about perhaps buying the standing timber uh, before um, uh, Thad and cut it. I, I'm certainly not in favor of that. Um, are we going to do that on all private properties? You, you to can, save you, the trees? Uh, you can't invest town money yeah. into a tree that we don't own that has a certain lifespan. I mean, you don't buy tree value on property that we don't own. You, if we own it, then we already own the trees. So to spend tax dollars or town monies, and that's what the conservation funds are. It's town money. It's not their money. I don't. I don't. Prove, I don't go along with purchasing the value of the timber to let them stand 
So eventually they will die and more trees will grow. And I guess that is a, another question maybe for our attorney. Um, you know, that, 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 you know, after they have, you know, the, so the Conservation Commission has control of their money. Um, do we, do we, you know, buying land on private property or buying trees on private property, do, you know, do we even have anything to say about that? And or is that can they just do if, that? Well, and if they yeah. and if they bought the value of the trees and then the trees were cut, they have no recourse. There's no. no. I mean, it's civil at that right. point, and it it just is a quagmire that the town does not need to get involved in. So on the good news, uh, after that meeting, uh, we came back here and met with Tim Nolan, uh, and uh, actually Fadden came back here too to look at the trees all around here, the pine yes. trees. And they said that um, that uh, Tim said that he wants to do a timber sale, uh, and we do have authority over that. I'm quite sure yeah. um, that um, so we can cut the the pines, leave all the hardwoods, and going to do a pine timber sale. You know, all the way going around back. Um, it'll be in November because um, that's the, the the mud season for. You know, and this is a nice, high, dry lot, mm -hmm. and that'll be a good job for them to do sometime in November during the, the fall nut season. So, I would say all these big pines are going to get cut this fall. Okay. Well, that was a good outcome from a meeting. So, yeah, that was a good deal. Um, that's all I have. Signature items. Linda, I'm sorry. There's a, a sheet in here about some shingles. Oh, yeah. Um, so, um, Ted Kraltman purchased um, the Edinger's property off of Winter Road. He's doing some improvements down there, and he's working with Sean Bergeron, and Sean Bergeron knew that there was those, we have some green shingles up, or some cedar shakes upstairs that are painted green, and he would like to buy them. Um, he made an offer in his, in that email. Yes. Um, Um, he wanted to buy four of the boxes, um, which are 25 square foot boxes, um, for fifty dollars. And then, if you, but if you're willing to get rid of all the shingles, say $50 thirty dollars each box, each, each, each box, each box, fifty dollars yeah. up to four boxes. But if you want to get rid of more than those, just those four boxes, and get rid of them all, he says that he was hoping to get a bargain at thirty dollars a bundle if he got them all, took them all. Call the man up. How long have they been up there? As long as I've been here. Okay. So. <laughs> That's the old rule. We haven't put our hands on them. And the only place where they are is undersiding right now on here, this building. So. Yeah. Right? Been there over 20 years. I know. Yeah. They should be good dry. Yeah. <laughs> they yeah. should be good and dry. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm okay with it. Yeah. Probably turn to powder when you pick them up. Shh. Make sure you get to check for Yeah, not until after he leaves. <laughs> Okay, now, now you guys signature. Oh, where are we doing? Never mind. There's a back page that somebody has to sign. Uh, an as is, where is clause kind of thing. Uh, Hope okay. Hutchinson's for director of Madison Television. Oh my goodness. You can put a little sticky for us. Oh. Henry Forrest for the Veterans Advisory Committee. Franklin Jones for the Veterans Advisory Committee. Eric Edwards for the Veterans Advisory Committee. Lowry for the Veterans Advisory Committee. Mike Brooks for the Old Home Week Committee. Can we make that like permanent? 
for three years, 2025. Ooh. Ooh. And Candy Sue Jones. Mr. Chairman, before you adjourn, could I ask, uh, should we make a motion to commit to that truck and wait for prices on the plow equipment? I don't think we need to make a motion. Just I, Do we all in agreement? We're good, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we're good. We hashed it out, but we yeah. didn't really make an agreement on it. Yeah. So. Go okay, for it. just for the record. Thank you. Call them up. We'll find the $17,835. Oh, we can definitely get the truck no matter what. Sir. Yeah. Yeah, because we want the insurance. Mm -hmm. And if, if you need it, if he needs a copy, I know some places I bought cruises before they needed copies of the minutes where we said we would. Yeah, no, I don't think he's. Somewhere. I don't even think he's at yeah. that point. You know what I mean? That would be somewhere down the road, but not now. Okay. Uh, motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. All here. Aye. <laughs>